Just bringing the Secretary of Health and Human Services, Alex Azar. Secretary Azar, thanks for joining us again this morning. The second week in a row, we're starting out with good news on a vaccine. Yeah, George, I'm just delighted to be with you first on GMA to break the news about this Moderna vaccine. Uh, I stood with President Trump in March with Tony Fauci in the very lab at NIH where we engineered this vaccine on January 13th. And the president said back in March that he hoped to have a vaccine in 12 months. And Tony Fauci interrupted him and said, well, maybe 18 if we're optimistic. And here we are. 10 months from the date when this virus hit our shore and we've got a second 90 percent plus effective vaccine for the american people this is really a historic day uh, and we hope that uh, because of moderna and pfizer's vaccines which we've already been producing to have enough by the end of december to vaccinate 20 million of our most vulnerable citizens so that's 20 million by the end of december who's going to get it first uh, well, we're going to follow the guidance once the full data package is in, that we're going to follow the guidance of CDC, uh, and they'll look at, is it senior citizens in nursing homes, is it first responders and healthcare workers? It'll be wherever it's going to add the most value according to the data and the science and the recommendations of our experts. How about broader distribution over time? The states say they need billions more to administer and track these vaccines. They've only gotten a little under 200 million. Uh, well, we'll ensure the states have whatever funding is needed, but it's really important. Some of our states just are still operating under a misconception. They don't actually touch the vaccine. This all goes through private distribution channels, goes to the CVS's, Walgreens, pharmacies, health centers, hospitals. Uh, some of our governors, we just, we're, gonna, we're having a call with the governors again this afternoon with the vice president, and we'll work to keep getting that understanding there, but we'll get them whatever they need. We're going to make sure this is a good, vac good distribution process for these historic vaccines. The president has questioned whether the announcement of, of the Pfizer vaccine and, and Moderna were held until after the election. Do you buy that? Well, we've made it clear. I've made it clear there'll be no politicization of these processes, and I'm, I just assume everybody else involved similarly is calling balls and strikes based on science data and evidence, and that is certainly what we're going to do. It's just, let's be celebrating right now. We have two vaccines that are with massive development programs, over 90% effective. George, in public health, we do not get 90% plus effective vaccines often, and here we have two vaccines with that type of efficacy and clean safety profiles. And thanks to President Trump's Operation Warp Speed, we're in commercial manufacturing of them as well as four others. So, George, it's just a it's just a great day for public health as we're looking at this coronavirus crisis, and we can have hope hope for the future for all of us. We are all encouraged by the news. That is no, there's no question about that. But it is going to take some time for these vaccines to be distributed on a widespread basis. What do we do in the meantime? The incoming chief of staff for, for President-elect Biden, Ron Klain, said yesterday that because the GSA hasn't authorized the transition, Biden's team is in the dark on planning their transition as well. They can't contact the health officials they need to ensure a seamless transition, to ensure that that vaccine distribution process continues as he takes office. Well, George, our distribution planning is 100% transparent. We have publicized our, our playbook. Uh, we, have, we have plans from all 64 public health jurisdictions in the United States on the distribution. Uh, and uh, once GSA determines that there is, if there is a transition to do, uh, we will ensure that it's cooperative and, uh, and professional. Uh, but right now, the American people should be reassured that uh, we're moving ahead in collaboration with all of our states and local authorities to make sure the vaccine distribution uh, works well. But don't you need to be talking to the president-elect's team now? Uh, well, George, we'll make sure that happens when and if it's appropriate to do that. But right now, we're working with all of the jurisdictions across the country, to which really will, will make the prioritization decisions, and we'll be shipping the vaccine uh, where they determine it ought to go. Why isn't it appropriate now? Uh, George, GSA has to make a determination that a transition is in effect. That determination has been made. My focus here is on, is on vaccines and also the important message for the American people that as we have this hope of two vaccines with incredible efficacy, therapeutic we approved last week, Eli Lilly's monoclonal antibody to treat patients uh, to keep them out of the hospital, hopefully, that there's so much hope, but we need people to act responsibly. Wash your hands, watch your distance, wear your face coverings when you can't do it, and be very careful of indoor settings like indoor restaurants and bars or household gatherings, we're going to let your guard down, and you may not do those things. That's how this disease is spreading. We don't have to shut down because we know that our universities, our K through 12 schools, our our workplaces, and our and flying on airlines, these are not the major vectors of disease transmission. It's those casual indoor gatherings where we have to really keep our guard up. And why? 
because there's so much hope and I want everyone to make it to the day where they can get a safe and effective vaccine and where there's plentiful an, uh, of, of these uh, treatments to be able to keep people out of the hospital if they do get COVID. So no Thanksgiving and Christmas celebrations indoors? Oh, no, we can have our Thanksgiving and Christmas celebrations indoors. We've put up guidance from the CDC. There's a range of risk from different types of activities. We've given very, very good practical advice about uh, you want to think about how many people are at your gathering. Uh, is it just household members or others also there? The more people you have, the more risk. Uh, the more you want to make sure you have social distance and wear face coverings. Try to have as much ventilation of any indoor gathering as possible. Of course, if you can do it outside, do that. Uh, but we have a lot of handy tips at cdc.gov or coronavirus.gov to help guide your family as you think about Thanksgiving and Christmas gatherings. Secretary Azar, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you, George. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.